Previously on to Geeks Talking, I had a quick interview with Sean Daly, whose interview just got released, of, I think, last week on the Two Geeks Talking YouTube channel, and he turned the interview around on me. He ended up actually asking me questions, and we had a great conversation about social media, the algorithms, a bunch of other things as well, too. So take a listen to this quick 10, 15 minute interview, and I, I hope you enjoy it. You can also look at Sean Daly's actual interview on our YouTube channel as well, too. So tell me what you think. Can I ask you questions or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. By all means. Okay, cool. I know that's good. Like, I, yeah. I just want to, yeah. I, I'm totally, I'm ask away. Like, hell, that's great content for me, too, because I never get to talk about myself. <laughs> okay, good. Well, that's, that's good. If, uh, I love go like, answering questions, but I would also love to. No, ask away, please. Okay. Come on. Obviously, you deal with a little bit of creative block with what you're doing too, right? Like it's not because mm -hmm. what you are doing, like this format and this like this is this requires a lot of creativity as well. I think a lot of people don't realize how creative um, and how much you have to think about something like video editing or coming up with engaging questions and being good at like conversing and stuff. Like that is an art. All of that stuff. So I would guess that you would have to deal with a little bit of creative block as well. Yeah, I do. Um, for me, it's it's trying to make sure that the person that's answering the, like for me, I have to edit my question sometimes. If I go on a tangent or something, half my question is gone. Right. So I have, to, I have to edit myself and then I have to listen to the person answering the question and I have to cut it down to something that's a complete sentence or something that sometimes if there's too many pauses or if, or if the person gets caught up in their own words their their message is lost mm. so i i try to piece it together so that it's coherent in some cases for sure so uh, for me it's it's a lot of time listening and re-editing and re-listening to make sure that i'm not cutting out their message and and as an editor, you know, it's it's important that the people uh, are able to share their voice to, you know, share what they're thinking and feeling. And so um, sometimes the audio will cut out, right. <laughs> you know, during an interview and it'll be like, how can I salvage this? Because it was a really good answer that I remember hearing, but I can't salvage what they've just said. Right. So it, it's it's a struggle sometimes. Like I haven't started, I didn't start editing until about two years ago, I, I would let everything be raw cool. that I would upload. And while that's good, in this day and age, it, it makes things very difficult for people to pay attention to. Yes. And the short attention <laughs> span these days is even worse than it was five years ago. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, it's probably, uh, <laughs> it's probably like, I, I believe that it's probably like lower than it was five years ago. And it's probably lower than what I believe it to be. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I think that's a bad thing because I mean, there's there's always a space there's always space for longer format, drawn out, unedited content or movies, you know, that aren't you know three cuts a second or like you know incredibly visually engaging. Or well, I mean that's even subjective, but yeah, I, I mean I kind of like that myself like i like content that is to the point and something that i can consume like reasonably quick so that i can move on to something else <laughs> uh and not that that is necessarily a bad thing i think that's just kind of the way technology is has moved us in the past like 20 years whether it's good or bad that's obviously a different discussion but um yeah i, I can definitely appreciate you know i mean like learning how to edit like you had to do that in order to kind of adjust to current media standards, I guess. So, well, yeah, I, I mean, I went back. So I was in IT for 20 years. I was a sysadmin for a good oh. number of my career. So I have a very logical brain right. as it is. Yeah. So when I went back to university for visual arts, communication, media, and film, my very first day was how to draw color wheels. Oh, cool. Take a person that has been logical for 20 years and ask them to be creative. <laughs> so, it was a bit of a process, I guess. It was a huge, it was a, it was at least six months before I finally got a, a decent hang of, of what is it to be a logically creative person. Editing is just 
a logical step for me. It was it was just putting scenes together to make things fit. So I was a producer and an editor for a good number of short films in university. My career helped my my previous career helped me be the person I am today, which right. is great. But like for me, I, I still consume cartoons and, and anime and manga and all that other stuff. For sure, yeah. You, you know, you have to be, you have to have your outlets, and video games is a huge part of mine. It, it, <laughs> my dude, outlet yeah. as well too. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I still have a PS4 here that hasn't been updated in three years. Oh but, man! <laughs> and an Xbox and all this other stuff. But cool. I love this this style. But yeah, the the people that I get to talk with. A lot of their struggles seem to be, you know, I'm putting out my content and it's being consumed in five seconds when it took me three hours to create. Right. And I'll get five or six likes. And the same for my video interviews as well, too, on YouTube. It's, I'll get 10 people visit. I have have over 500,000 views in a 10-year span, something like that. Right. Yeah. And yet someone will post a video with, you know, how to or whatever, get a million follows and, <laughs> and all of a sudden they're monetized and, and I'm not. I feel that struggle. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the same thing with a lot of like music and artwork as well, where it's just like sometimes the algorithm is in your favor and sometimes it is elsewhere uh, looking at other things, which uh, we're all slaves to the algorithm as, as I've heard evidently. I don't know if, if that's like, you know, if the algorithm is almighty being that needs to be feared by any means i think it's sometimes just luck of the draw but again you would probably know how this stuff works better than i do i do what i can but it's like i interviewed biff naked i mean Ooh. talented musician yes. amazing person yeah. love her stuff 100 views yeah right yeah yeah that's that's yeah i see what you mean uh she is very talented I'm like super cool as well that, that's awesome that you got to do that though i mean that experience alone has to be super cool yeah, everyone that's come on the show has had a, a wonderful story to tell and, and i love the fact that i get to keep doing this and this is what drives me to keep yeah. doing this after all this time i'm not making money from this i never have mm -hmm. i mean i've been demonetized since 2016 oh really maybe earlier mm -hmm. yeah. Not not enough views. They they increase the amount of subscribers you need, as well as the mm. total watched hours is four thousand hours in a year, and that continuously rotates. So it's not based off the first of the year. It's based off of every first of every month. Right. So if you haven't received four thousand views in a given month, demonetize you and ticks down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've heard that over the past few years, YouTube has just been like. Even for content creators who are pulling in like millions, like they're like something has changed and it's it's not as good, like it's not as lucrative, I guess, as it once was. And it's I guess because YouTube is changing so much and creating new restrictions and uh Well, they're they're focusing on what TikTok and all these other platforms are doing, which is shorts, yeah. which is anything under a minute. And that attributes to the whole you know, mass consumption of media in any given time. Like TikTok is is the new rabbit hole for me when it comes to what what you what YouTube used to be. So you can spend what feels like a couple of minutes on TikTok, and you've already spent three hours of your day just <laughs> flipping through. Right. And that's, and that's what YouTube wants to become, and that's what Facebook has done, and that's what every other mass media has has done with social media. And well, it's great for content creators and, and our artists like yourself, in fact, to showcase the process of of your art style in you know five second bits or whatever from beginning to end. You know, you would get more views as a as a content creator that way than you would as if you did a live stream on Twitch or something like that, showcasing your entire process. It's just the way people are, are consuming. And, and while that's good to a certain extent, I think it's it doesn't showcase the struggle of the mistakes. It only showcases the the end result of what a creator wants to showcase. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. You can only show so much in five seconds. And that's weird because I feel like minute videos go against like the purpose of YouTube. I mean, the purpose of YouTube should be not one minute videos i mean those are fine obviously i feel like the, that's not what the platform is for that's what tiktok is for 
Um, so to try and lean into, are they, are they competitors, YouTube and TikTok? Are they like technically? Well, Google owns YouTube. So I don't, and I think Facebook owns TikTok. So right. Yeah. Okay. So to, to extent, I think they are. <clears throat> it's just weird for YouTube to want to like lean into, you know, to just, yeah, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, leaning into one minute clips and stuff. And I'm, yeah, that, that, that should be like better left to certain platforms like TikTok. But I guess it is what it, it is. Like, it's just, that's like, unfortunately how I, yeah, I don't love it, but I, I'm also not on YouTube. I don't spend a lot of, you know, I, I do spend a lot of time watching um, certain channels, but I don't use it to create content. Um, I have been using Twitch a little bit more to like live stream inking sessions and painting and stuff, yeah. which is fun. But again, it's not something that it's like, oh, there's, you know, 500 people in chat and, <laughs> I, you know, but at the same time, that doesn't ever stop me from wanting to at least broadcast a little bit and take questions and answer stuff here and there. Um, it's a lot of fun, but it's not lucrative by any means. But it, it, it's getting yourself out there. It's getting your name out there. And that's really what all social media truly is. It's, yeah. it's can your voice be loud enough against 7 billion other people yeah. to kind of carve yourself a niche that, that works for you. And, and I think creators like yourself, creative people like yourself are better suited for those platforms because you've, you're doing stuff that people enjoy my interviews while they are good and I love them and I love the people on them. It doesn't draw interest. It only draws interest for a little bit and then yeah. away it goes. And I have interviews from creative people like Phil Folio back when I first started talented creative person for the past 30 years, 30 plus years, I should say with many different genres in both magic gathering as well as comic creation. 100, 100 listens, actually. That was still a podcast back then. Wow. So I, I think the people that come on the show, if I can give them a platform of some kind, no matter how long they're on, or how short they're on the show, or if they come back five times <laughs> or whatever the situation is, you know, I, I just want to give them a free space to, to talk about what they want to talk about. For sure. And so that's what I do. I like, I obviously, I don't, I probably don't personally know many of the guests um shout out to dirk manning who i believe was uh, just recently on yeah he might do he's uh i think he's the he's the only person that's been on more than five times oh cool so you definitely know dirk, dirk manning oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh yeah. yeah i mean like i can't speak for everyone obviously but i'll go out on a limb and say that like everybody really appreciates having a platform like two geeks talking and being able to literally just like sit down and talk. I know that like for me, it's, uh, at least like it, it does mean a lot. Like it is, I I'm thankful that like you do what you do and give this platform to, you know, be able to just talk about like life and comics and video games and all this nerd fun stuff that we all grew up with. So yeah, well, I, I love it. I think it's super cool. Awesome.